For trichomes.com, I'm Jesse Batend, and this is The High Ground. On this show, we talk to leaders of the cannabis industry, CEOs, farmers, politicians, anyone making an impact on the cannabis community and beyond. We're heading into fire season in California. Last week, Governor Gavin Newsom declared a statewide emergency and also admitted during a press conference, quote, let me just make this crystal clear. We failed to predict and plan for these shortages, and that is unacceptable. But that doesn't mean that there weren't options. Last week, Tricomes editor Rachel Hyman wrote an article tracing the history of hempcrete, a building material made of hemp that's both fireproof and already regularly used in Europe. That being said, hempcrete is rarely used here in the United States. If you haven't already checked out Rachel's article, I highly recommend it. Today, we're talking to Dion Margraf. Dion is a board member of the U.S. Hemp Building Association, an organization that is trying to make hempcrete a mainstay of building and construction here in the United States. Dion, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. So I guess the first question for you is just, what exactly is hempcrete? Hempcrete is the name of the technology of combining hemp, water, and lime binder. And it's old and it's new. So it's an old technology. You know, we've been building with lime forever. Uh, You know, the Roman aqueducts are made with this technology. But in the modern era, combining just hemp is the new twist Whereas, you know, historically they put rocks and all kinds of different straw. So what are some of the specific benefits that hemp brings to this equation? Yeah, it's it's an insulating material, so it's not structural in the way we're speaking of. But the benefits are crazy out of the world. It's carbon negative. That's the big thing. So... If you like calculated all the the energy to produce the building, you know, transportation and, you know, calculated all the CO2 footprint, it's carbon negative. So it actually helps clean the sky. Construction is the biggest cause of pollution CO2 wise. Let's say around 40% of the world's CO2 comes from just the construction industry. So to turn that into a solution, it's a big game changer, but it's also fireproof, bug proof, lasts forever, saves 50 to 75% of energy consumption, whether that's heating or cooling. And yeah, the walls breathe, it's not toxic, it's easy, it's price competitive. It's many great things. But those are the biggest. <laughs> sure. And do you have some sense of how much of the of that 35% or 40% of mm-hmm. the world's pollution that's caused by construction, do you have some sense of how much of it is caused by sourcing materials or, or the actual materials themselves? It, if 11% is the actual, the materials itself, hmm. and the rest is like transportation and the energy required. How much potentially could it make a difference? Are, are people looking at how much of a difference that could make, you know, if, if this became a mainstay of construction? Well, it could turn the biggest problem into the biggest solution. So basically, hmm. you know, we have construction is such a big thing it's huge industry and statistically we're about to add two billion people to the planet and we need to double the amount of construction that has you know we basically need to double our housing now so like in california we need to add 3.5 million homes just to become even. So the real crisis, and we could turn this crisis into, you know, a great solution for the planet. 
And specifically in California, we are coming up on um, fire season. I'd love to get get a sense from you um, in general what you what you think about the upcoming fire season and potentially how using hempcrete might be um, a solution to some of the problems that California faces. Yeah, and the planet. I mean, it's a it's a huge problem. I'm, I live here in San Diego, California, and yeah, our greatest threat to life is fire. It's even more than earthquakes, and yeah, this is a hundred percent fire, you know, proof. So you know, like uh, we just one of the companies in the hemp industry just submitted to testing. And it scored a zero on the fire scale. So, you know, you actively could take a blowtorch to it and it's not going to burn. And so to be clear, zero is good. Yeah, zero on a scale of uh, 450 to zero. So they've never had something test zero. And so it's basically saying it's, you know, fireproof. Yeah, I... I saw that uh, it was rated inflammable in smoke development and flame spreading tests. Um, can you kind of decode right. that for us a little bit? What exactly does that mean? Right. So basically, the the people who test scientifically uh, the spread of fire, they took a torch to a sample for an hour, and the flame, did, you know, the burn did not spread. So that's, wow. you know, pretty unique. And that's, again, that's the, what we've seen with tests throughout Europe. This is a technology that's being used all throughout Europe and used in America so far very sparingly. And that's because we haven't gone through the certification building code. And the organization I'm working with is going through those steps. So it's a very game-changing thing. And once we do have it in the building code, I'm sure you'll see it used everywhere. In fact, it's my goal to make it illegal to not build with it because the, you know, the, the reasons to use it are so overwhelming that I don't think if society really analyzed it, they would allow not using it. I want to talk to you about both your organization, what they do, and some of the barriers, both historical and current, to using hempcrete or or hemp in general. But that's really interesting. Can I just ask you more about your uh, sort of crusade to make it illegal to build with anything but hempcrete? Is that just sort of like a a goal one day, or uh, are there conversations? It's more like a epiphany that I came to that that was just like, you know, if, you know, if we could put it in proper perspective, it, you know, I don't think society would allow it, you know, since it checks so many boxes of like health, uh, long term, you know, effectiveness, you know, it's a product that'll last basically forever, you know, hundreds of years. And the other thing is it's mold and um, resistant. So it has such a high pH that no mold or bacteria will grow. So if you, you know, that's a major problem in housing today. You did mention that populations are increasing. We're going to need to build more housing. And, and maybe I've, I've already said your answer, but I guess... Um, a skeptic out there might say, okay, well, this is all fine and good, but we already have lots and lots and lots of structures that are currently built, not out of hempcrete. So like, sure, maybe we should do this going forward, but like, isn't it going to be a while? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, basically our house is on fire. Like if I was going to make an analogy, like it's like we're in those, you know, days, like if we look at the pandemic that we're going through, we're facing the same thing ecologically. So, you know, we're probably in like the, you know, March of the whole pandemic and we don't even realize we're in a pandemic. 
that's how bad it is. So, hmm. you know, it's just scary. And here we have a solution. We have the vaccine already. It's hemp, you know. So we need to, like, you know, our government has gone through this before in that we had an emergency during World War II and the government had a program called Hemp for Victory. And that's what we basically need to do now. We need government action to say, hey, this is such a big thing and we're in such a big problem that we need government subsidy and attention to this, you know, overwhelming solution to the problem that we're facing. I mean, like you say, California is literally, and the world is literally on fire right now, the Amazon. And, you know, this is a solution to, you know, turn that whole equation around. At least when it comes to housing, you know, we wouldn't have to risk firefighters going up in these crazy locations to save a structure when that structure could survive the fire without putting lives at risk. And that's frustrating to know that, you know, society is building these inferior toxic products that we're risking our lives, not only when there's a fire, but every day because they're toxic and we spend 90% of our time in these toxic, chemical, horrible products when they could be a solution to the world's problems. Hmm. So you mentioned that this is not a new technology necessarily. Um, Why hasn't there been a stronger adoption or embrace of this potential? And why are we only doing safety tests now? Do you have a sense of the, why the industry or, or, or just society in general isn't kind of clamoring for this? Well, we're in this, you know, funny position where, you know, it's a proven technology from Europe, but, you know, the building industry is like a slow moving ship. It's possible to move, but it just takes, you know, some time to turn that ship. And we're turning that ship, I think, but we still need more awareness that we need to turn that ship. So, you know, unfortunately, It's taking a crisis, but at least the good news is that hemp is hope and there is a solution and a possibility. We just need to make consumers and the government aware of this situation. And I think natural forces will take over one that it's cheaper, it's better and it's healthier. So, you know, again, it just ticks the box. We just need to do it now, especially since one of the main things uh, that we have no excuse that hemp's legal and it can be produced locally. And, yeah, you know, it's just we got to do it. So let's talk a little bit about um, what exactly is the U.S. Hemp Building Association and uh, what is your role in in this whole story? It's a new group that was formed just over a year ago. It's a, an association of members that are trying to get this industry growing here in the U.S. as it's going around the world. You know, it's fairly well known and going in Europe. There's quite a big industry in, say, France, in England, you know, where they're building, um, you know, like apartment buildings and, you know, uh, commercial buildings. But it hasn't happened here yet. And on our website, We have an article that I actually wrote describing the situation and what we need to do. 
and it's fairly straightforward. We just need to organize, and that's what we're busy doing, you know, getting our ducks in order and just, uh, you know, doing the nitty gritty of going through the process. And so that's where we are. And can you give us a sense um, of the the general timeline? I know you said it was, you know, it's it's slow to move this ship. I assume you're having lots of conversations with lots of different people. But um, yeah, for first, do you have a sense of, of what that timeline looks like? And then I'm curious kind of what those conversations might look like. Yeah, I mean, in theory, it should take, you know, I would say months, you know, six months. Hmm. But in reality, it's like 18 months. It's kind of like the vaccine situation. Like, yes, you know, okay, we know what we need to do. But, you know, just reality says, okay, you know, and that's what I say in this article that I've written is that in the ideal world, it would be less than a year. But, you know, geez, you know, I wrote this article eight months ago. Okay, I didn't know <laughs> that this whole pandemic thing was going to happen. But really, in a way, that's not a big excuse. But it's, a you know, we just have to do it. And, you know, I thought, you know, hemp would become legal, for example, I've been saying it for 30 years that under five years, but it took all these years. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Do, do you think that it's, you know, it's possible that you'll maybe one day live in like a hempcrete house or something like that? Oh yeah. I already, yeah, I have two. I built the world's huh. first uh, tiny hemp house on wheels that I have here at my house. And oh, I'm great. just about to finish a tiny hemp house model that I'm going to do a, you know, like a GoFundMe. But yeah, I think again, they're just going to be literally, we're not going to be able, we wouldn't allow people to build not doing it this way. You know, it, it might sound fantastic or, or like a fantastical position right now, but, you know, looking back, we'll be like, of course, we're not going to put poison or DDT into our water. You know, it's like, of course, you know, so that's how overwhelming it looks from my perspective. I know it sounds weird, but it's true. <laughs> hmm. So just to follow up on your, your point about the timeline, it, it sounds like it's possible that in a more ideal world, uh, we could see by next fire season some construction going that w that would be, you know, significantly safer. Uh, well, you know, again, it's just it's the timeline. Hemp houses are happening, you know, but until we get this certification, which you know, it's. Yeah, just like, you know, CBD and hemp and all these things. If we look back historically, like, you know, this should have been an emergency call that our government would, you know, get, you know, like, oh, yeah, this is obvious. Let's do this. But then reality, it's taking all this time. And that's just, I suppose, the way it goes. But really, the most I find... You know, I've been in this for 30 years, and I find the things move fastest through economic power or economic change. And that's why I feel if we could just get the consumer aware and demanding it, then everything else falls in place. Are you talking at all with government and, and politicians? Like, is this something that they're interested in totally every nook and clan everywhere on the planet here in vista here in san diego everyone knows about it it's almost like an urban legend it's funny i'll this is a true story and i go around san diego at least and when i meet people i'll say something like oh i'm uh, into hemp building with hemp and they'll say everywhere i go 
literally, uh, they'll say, oh, you mean hempcrete? So, I mean, <laughs> it, you know, it's just like people, it's almost like Bigfoot. Like people know about, you know, they've heard the story, but it's not reality yet. And that's, for me, cool but frustrating. Dion Margraf is a board member with the U.S. Hemp Building Association. Uh, Dion, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. Thanks for doing this, and I hope people listen and investigate further because it is very important. You can find more cannabis industry reporting at trichomes.com, as well as more great shows like this one. If you're a member of the cannabis community and you have a story you want to share with us, reach out. You can reach the show at highground at trichomes.com. Please take a second to subscribe to the podcast and write a review. It really helps others find the show. You can also join the discussion with industry insiders and get your voice heard by joining the community at trichomes.com and following us on all social media. The High Ground is produced by David Fortin. I'm Jesse Batend. Thank you for listening.